of the working classes, the greater the growth of the political parasite class. It's sort of like if you, uh, it's sort of like putting a, a direct bloodline into a tumor. It just makes the tumor grow and grow. And so what's happening is the smaller the government that you start with, the larger the government that you end with. And I think that's the case with the American experiment, which is a noble but tragic experiment where they said, let's start with the smallest possible government that we can get. And I think they did a great job of creating a small government, delineating it with the Bill of Rights, the Constitution. But what happened, what has happened since, is the amount of economic freedom and productivity that was generated by that liberty has created a massive tax base that has swelled the political and parasite classes to the point where what started off as the smallest government in the world has now turned into the very largest government in history and the very largest government that anybody could conceive of. And that, I think, is the central tragedy of what has occurred. People who fight for freedom don't know that they're laying down the groundwork or sowing the seeds for future tyranny. And until I think we understand the degree to which we, are, we have an allegiance not to a political leader or even to an ideology, but to a tax bomber, once we understand that, we can begin to really work towards a free society. But I think until we see that, we're just kind of playing games uh, in our cages. Now, uh, you're welcome to continue breaking down your view of this paradigm. I've got quite a few questions and uh, avenues of discussion looking at, at, at uh, what you're talking about from different angles. Uh, but uh, please continue before I get to my questions. Well, let's, let's take it up to the present, right? Because uh, I do sort of true news segment, but I try to break down uh, the, the news. If you look at what's going on right now, there's a budget deficit, deficit commission that's going on. And the results of it were all perfectly predictable. The, uh, the dependent classes, all right, how is it that they turn us against each other, right? Direct human ownership is very unprofitable because the moment you start pushing guns in people's faces, they go limp, like intellectually, and they're not creative. They, don't be on, they won't want to be entrepreneurs and so on. And so what you have to do to rule human beings is you have to set them against each other. And the best way to set human beings against each other, if you're a, a human farmer, is to not own them directly, but to take from the productive classes and create a dependent class. And the dependent class is rich and poor. It's the military-industrial complex. Uh, it's, uh, it's school teachers who are dependent upon the government for their summers off and their job security and their pensions. It's welfare, people on welfare and so on. They're all dependent upon the state. And so the moment that people like you and I begin to say, we're not free, the entire paradigm is not free, we, we do not have the liberties we think we do, we're only granted certain liberties so we're more productive for others. The moment we begin to talk about a peaceful, non-violent, non-coercive solution to social problems rather than hurting people around and pointing guns at them and selling off the unborn to anyone that they can find in order to fund the bribery of the uh, voters in the present, the moment we start talking about that, the dependent classes start to attack us, right? And you can see this uh, very clearly. Uh, this has happened to Ron Paul. It's happened to just about anybody who raises their voice in a cry of freedom in this land, that we get attacked by the people who are dependent upon the state. And the real tragedy, I believe, is that the only people who really care about the poor, the only people who really care about education, are people who are striking at the root of the violence of a state of the system. Because as we can see right now, this budget deficit commission is completely predictable. What happens is the ruling classes take care of their own, and they only create a dependent class to maintain their hold over everyone and to make sure that the group of people who are going to attack anyone who talks about freedom. So when they're talking about deficit reduction, deficit cutting, do they talk about repudiating the debt to foreign governments and international bankers? Of course not, because that's the class they're designed to protect. What happens is the dependent classes show, are shown to be completely expendable. So they're going to cut welfare, they're going to cut Medicare, they're going to cut Medicaid, they're going to cut Social Security to the point where people are going to go through extreme and extraordinary... Ha -ha. And then they're going to use those uh, people that have been displaced as a political weapon saying, if you want to get the welfare checks and the Walmart goodies back again, you've got to politically go for even a bigger government to rob what's left of the middle class, which the ruling elite, from my view, has decided to basically clamp down on. No, no that's right. And, and what happens is uh, the, the fruits of violence are always disastrous. Uh, are always disastrous. But what happens, of course, is that freedom gets blamed for it, right? So for some reason, people think that the reason the Great Recession and the housing bubble and the tech bubble and the savings and loans in the 80s, that all of that resulted from some sort of free market enterprise, as if the government didn't run the entire currency, as if the 
government didn't have, you know, millions of regulations and massive amounts of taxation and hurting people around at gunpoint all over the place and throwing billions of people in jail, that is not a free society. And so all of the disasters that accrue to violence, the government has a handy scapegoat in the name of freedom. And that, of course, is the real tragedy. People are somehow blaming voluntary peaceful human interactions for all of these massive disasters, as if you and I could run up a $13 trillion debt on our own. I mean, it's just astounding. But the, the dependent classes are going to get really badly treated in this next round, and uh, it is going to be used as an excuse to attempt to extend the power and control because the disease uh, is masquerading as its own cure. Well, I agree with you. Uh, Stefan uh, Molyneux is our guest. We're going to come back from break, and, and, and I'm going to go through some notes that I've written about uh, the basic thesis that he just put out that I completely agree with because you know, the globalists themselves have basically described it uh, in very similar terms. And, of course, Stefan's talking about how he just noticed this himself. And, and, and I've had that happen to me so, so many times. I will notice something and think about it and then later read globalist publications where they are saying exactly what I thought, but then from their farming perspective. Uh, so it's just incredible how obvious all of this is, and it's hidden in plain view. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Hi, this is Alex Jones. Did you know that the global elite are now storing non-hybrid seeds in secret storage vaults near the Arctic Circle? Did you know that in a real meltdown, non-hybrid seeds could become more valuable than silver or gold? It's true. Seeds have outperformed even gold and silver before in this country, and it's possible that it could even happen again. So our friends at Solutions from Science have put together the perfect mix of non-hybrid seeds. They call it a survival seed bank, and it can produce an endless supply of nutrient-dense food for you and your family. And here's the best part. These seeds have not been genetically modified in any way, and you actually get enough seeds to plant a full acre crisis garden. So visit them today at survivalseedbank.com. That's survivalseedbank.com. Or give them a call at 877-327-0365. That's 877-327-0365. Remember, in a real crisis, non-hybrid seeds are the ultimate barter item. This is Alex Jones for SurvivalSeedBank.com. Hurricanes, ice storms, blackouts, and the prospect of civil unrest. When the unexpected happens, will you be ready? Hundreds of concerned citizens across America have already installed wind generators to help protect their families in the event of a disaster. So act now and build your own wind generator with an easy-to-assemble kit from windbluepower.com. Wind Blue Power carries the best battery charging wind generators and permanent magnet alternators in the country. Our 12-volt wind generator kits are also great for small cabins and campers. And all Wind Blue Power kits qualify for a 30% tax credit. So get your discount now. Go to windbluepower.com today and enter coupon code radio for 5% off or simply call 800-976-0026. 800-976-0026. 0026. Protect your family's emergency energy needs now at windbluepower.com. Pure water. What could be better than the gift of health for your loved ones? And who better to help you give the gift this holiday season than BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com? If those on your gift list are drinking or bathing in unfiltered city or well water, chances are that water is contaminated with rust, bacteria, chlorine, and fluoride. For just pennies a day, Berkey Water Filters remove dangerous contaminants from both well and city water, is powerful enough to purify stagnant pond water, and is great for camping in emergencies. Right now, GCN listeners get 5% off all ceramic filters filter systems and free shipping on orders over $50. Purchase any filter system from BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com to get your choice of Berkey Sport Bottles, a KDF shower filter, a set of fluoride filters, or the new Sight Glass Spigot absolutely free. Visit BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com or call 877-99-BERKEY today. That's 1-877-99-BERKEY. Give the gift of health at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com today. Stefan Molyneux is our guest into the next hour. Uh, coming up in about 20, 30 minutes, we'll open the phones up. Got a lot of other key news coming up. But going through his analogy, which isn't really even an analogy, it's how the world works, of countries being farms, being plantations. Since we broke up from being just small bands, tribal bands, 
where people pretty much just elected uh, who their chief would be because they could hunt the best and lead the best. And then it moved into the witch doctors and a lot of con artistry and things that grew from there into the control grid that we see today. I want to throw these points out at Stefan. The issue is, if you go back to the Renaissance, there was a major resistance against tyranny. And the system saw that where people had actually uh, broken through and forced uh, freedom, uh, that it created prosperity. So they said, wait a minute, we're at war with the French or we're at war with the English or we're at war with the Dutch or the Spanish. If we allow more freedom in our country, more industry will come here. More people will immigrate here uh, who are uh, developing new sciences and, 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 and manufacturing things. So it was a competition. But now the decision has openly been made to establish world government openly. To establish world government, uh, you know, run by these robber baron elite families who don't want a free market, so that no one can run state to state, nation to nation. So there's no competition between the farms, and so everything can basically be run like North Korea. And that decision has been made because the the elites openly say the future doesn't need us. People aren't just cheap. They're valueless to the globalists now. They want to phase out and get rid of at least. 80% of us, they have the robotics, they have the life extension, uh, they, uh, they don't want to share the world in the future with us, they have pure disdain for us, especially the uh, hog-like uh, uh, domesticated class. So what do you think of those statements I just made? Well, I'm not uh, too up on the depopulation stuff, but I will, I certainly agree with you that there is a, um, the, the, the ruling elite does not like competition to attract the best livestock. So an example of this, which we're all pretty aware of, is what's just happened in Ireland. I remember it was about 10 or 15 years ago, Ireland dropped its corporate tax rate to 13.5%, which was hugely lower than just about anywhere else. So, of course, everybody goes swarming all over there, and Microsoft and uh, other companies, uh, Intel, I think, set up headquarters there, and the Irish economy boomed, and everyone was like, oh, Ireland is going to be the next European tiger of economic productivity and so on. And I remember even saying at the time, it's like, well, that's just going to allow them to have a bigger government, which will, and so they'll probably be one of the first to go bankrupt. And that, of course, is exactly what's happened. They've now gone bankrupt. And the EU is putting in as a condition of the bailout of Ireland that they increase their corporate tax rate because they don't want to lower their own. They don't want uh, Ireland to be low. So, yeah, there is a cross-pollination of control mechanisms, which is partly what the European currency, the euro, was all about. Now, everybody's dependent on uh, each other, and so they're beginning to dictate cross-border-wise thus lowering the competition and, and destroying the last capacities for the shreds of freedom in Europe. Continue. Continue. Uh, yeah, well, it's the same thing is going to happen to Spain. And Spain has an economy that is absolutely enormous relative to Ireland. Uh, it's close to happening in England. In England, of course, is slightly ahead of us in uh, messing up the dependent classes by cutting their funding. Uh, and uh, so when Spain goes down, there's going to be a great challenge because the euro is going to face massive undertow is going to be devalued relative because everybody's going to see if you want to know what what european what the european economic situation looks like all you have to do is imagine a uh, an operating room or an er right and it's got like 20 or 30 patients in it and they're all bleeding but some of them are bleeding a little bit more than others so what the doctors are doing is they're hoovering the blood out of the ones who are bleeding the least and they're pumping it into the ones who are bleeding the most well of course the only end product of all of that is all the patients are going to die and that, of course, is not remarked upon in the media. It's just something that can't be talked about. There's always but you forgot cool, one right? part of the equation. We're going to come back in one minute and finish up with it. You forgot one part of that great analogy because there's, a, there's something else going on in the hospital uh, ER triage area where all this blood is running out on the floor. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. You've heard Alex explain how the Silver Lungs Generator infuses the respiratory system with your self-produced colloidal silver solutions, yet many are unaware of the entire function of the Silver Lung System and how it has been designed to deliver your silver solutions anywhere in or on the body. My name is Mario Cifaldi, and I'm the developer of the Silver Lungs Generator. Not only does the Silver Lung System produce endless colloidal and ionic silver solutions, it also comes equipped with the proper applicators and devices needed to deliver your silver solutions directly to key target areas. This includes the eyes, ears, nose, lungs, 
topically to the skin and orally for the digestion.